Good morning, everyone. How are you? Are you happy to be here? I can't hear you? Ah, I noticed that the younger ones are speaking more than the older ones. Are you happy to be here? Okay. This morning is a special occasion. And I want you, all of you, to remember that your country has recognized you as a leader. But leadership carries with it not just the acclaim that you got and the applause and the clapping. You liked the clapping just now when you came up, correct? But it isn't just about that. It's also about the obligation that comes with leadership. And being a leader means, first and foremost, that you have to know right from wrong. You understand that? Right from wrong. Being a leader means that you have to care about others and make sure that if you see somebody being unfair, that you're prepared to stand up and defend them when it happens. Sometimes in school you see people being bullied, correct? That's not good, is it? So how are we going to get over and to tell the others that you don't treat them that? How many of you went to Sunday school and heard, do unto others as you would what? Can't hear you. Let's go again. Do unto others. And that's the golden rule because it's the rule you must walk with every day and every night of your life. And sometimes it's hard to say or step in, correct? But just because it's hard doesn't mean that you don't do it. And as you get older, you understand that in life you make choices, but every choice has a consequence. And what I want you to remember is that you have to own both the choices and the consequences in your life. And that's what becoming an adult is really about in part. Because you get the right and the freedom to choose. There was a time when we couldn't guarantee all human beings had freedom. Many of you have done history, not true? So you know there was a time when men and women were not necessarily free. And when freedom is embraced, Freedom carries with it those responsibilities that I'm talking about. If you have a house and you just leave it and you don't fix it and you don't paint it and you don't deal with the maintenance, it starts to fall down. How many of you exercise? And you exercise because you want to keep your body fit, correct? It's no different about the other things in your life. Mentally, you need to keep your mind fit. You need to keep your body fit. You need to put into your family and your community and your country to keep it fit. And therefore, leadership is about understanding how you can do all of that. Leadership is also about being able to inspire others to do something that you want to do with a common mission, correct? So that your ability to be able to engage and talk with, not talk to or at, but talk with people. And to remember that not everybody has the same attributes, not everybody looks the same way, not everybody can do the same things, but everybody is worthy of our respect and our care. And if you can do these things while doing the marine biology or the law or the equestrian or the other things that people said to us just now or being a cricketer or being an accountant or being like Rihanna or being a politician. <laughs> if you can do those things, then believe you me, you will be honoring the faith that we have put in you this morning to be the leaders of our country. There was a time when I, like you, and all of the rest here who gave out the badges, we were just like you. And we were in primary school, 
I see William Dugan nodding his head because he was at primary school with me. I wouldn't tell you what kind of boy he was. But the bottom line is, all of us know what it is to be young. All of us know what it is to dream. All of us know what it is to want to make that difference and to be recognized in whatever small way. But unless those who we live with are also getting through and being respected and living well, then we have not gotten to where we need to go. Because the journey is not about you alone. The journey is about us together. Can we repeat it? The journey is not about you alone. The journey is about who? Us together. And if you remember nothing else this morning, remember that you have to honor leadership by being able to take care of us together. We got a deal? I may not be around when many of you bring honor to this country, to yourselves, and to your family. But this morning is a recognition that our nation must relate to you and must cultivate leaders if we want a strong country for you 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years from now. And many of the things that you see me fighting for, only a few nights ago, a nine-year-old questioned me about COP26. A nine-year-old. <laughs> now, when a nine-year-old can question you, Kirk, about COP26, it tells you that our children are far more engaged than we give them credit for. There are some among you here who have written essays that have won international prizes. And when we read them, you're talking about what kind of world we have lived in looking back 30 years from this pandemic. The lesson to me is that there is no citizen too young or too old for us to have conversations about where we want to take this country. And a lot of the battles that we are fighting now, you see me talking about, are battles that are going to affect you. Because if the world's climate gets worse, it means that you are going to be living in an environment that is difficult. In all my 55 years, 56 years, I forget I turned 56. <laughs> That's what happens when you start to get a little gray. But in my 56 years, I've only known what it is to have one hurricane in Barbados. And that's the one you had this year with me, Hurricane Elsa. But we know now that we're likely to see far more rather than waiting for another 56 years before we see one. There's another committee that I chair that is about how do we fight the fact that for decades, human beings have not, or put it another way, human beings have been perhaps taking too much antibiotics. You know what antibiotics are? And when you get sick and you really need them or you're in a hospital and then a super virus comes about, the antibiotics are no longer effective. But there was a time a hundred years ago when if you went to the dentist or if you were a mother having a baby, the risk of infection could put your life at risk. And the antibiotics were able to be able to make that difference, to make those procedures safe. If we don't get it right, then it will have implications for you in 2050. And many of you will face a world where the climate is inhospitable, where the Minister of Agriculture is here. In 60 years' time, the United Nations is saying that the soils that grow our food will not have the nutrients necessary to provide the food. So we have a duty as a small state. No matter how small this country is, you can go, as Rihanna has shown us, to be at the top of the world and be respected by billions of people. If you do the things that can command their respect, and that can endure. And we have battles to fight to protect you and your families 
and your children and your grandchildren. And in the same way, these adults that you see here have accepted the mantle of leadership to make it a better and safer world for you. I want you to walk from here on in, however young you are, however old you are, to remember that you are leaders of Barbados and that what is required of you is to help build this nation. And while you are not yet in the cabinet or at the head of the firms of the country or the head of the labor movement of the country, that what you still have to do is to play your part because leadership is not a one-man show or a one-woman show. It is collectively about how we work together. And that is why I ask you to remember those two words, us together. I want to wish you all a very, very blessed and happy Christmas. I feel for many of you because I know that you are longing for your online school days to come to an end, that you're longing to be able to mix with your friends again and to go into a classroom and learn. And we're going to try and work with you and your parents because we know that that is what all of us want. But we need to do it safely and we need to make sure that you, as you do it, can also be safe because you don't want anybody harming anyone or getting sick. So my friends, be proud. Be conscious that even though these have been two difficult years, that we feel you, we have you, and we will work with you to make up for the time that you may have lost in the last two years. I know that your Minister of Education, Santia Bradshaw, every week she talks about how can she get things better for you and how can she make it easier for some of you to make different choices that the system doesn't allow so that some of you who are on this side of the room, by the time you get to this side of the room, that you will have an educational system, hopefully, that recognizes that you have different abilities. But as I said almost 30 years ago, each one matters. And because each one matters, we will work together to make the opportunities possible for you, whether you're studying science, whether you're studying TVET and vocational arts, mechanics, humanities, languages, want to work in the marine area, it doesn't matter. Our role is to try to create the opportunities for you. But your role is to make best of all of those opportunities. And as leaders, make sure that you carry as many of your school colleagues and friends with you, doing the right thing for the right reasons to make a better place and a stronger Barbados. Thank you, God bless, and happy Christmas.